Your work has actually spoken for itself. I, I know people that play guitars that you've built. I know people that play guitars that you have fixed. I have a guitar that you've built. It's one of my favorite things on planet Earth. Um, uh, shameless plug. Keep yeah. going. No, I will. I will. Uh, Feed me with praise. <laughs> Well, yeah, but the, the, honestly, like your 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 craftsmanship and your uh, you know and your work speaks for itself. Like anyone who's touched anything you've built or made would be a fool to think it's anything but pretty close to perfect. To be honest. So there you go. There's there's your flowers. I feel fucking gross now. Thanks. I, that's exactly <laughs> it's that's exactly what I was aiming for. Um. So. So it's uh, like sort of running back through the timeline then. So 2019, you had to take a step back. And just as you were about to stay, take a step forward, that was roughly around when the pandemic really started, the lockdown in early yeah. 2020. Um, so it almost was serendipitous that when you felt ready to go back to work, that was when everyone had to stay home. Which is a very well, interesting sort of uh, like you know, sort of swimming against the uh, against the current sort of thing, or maybe with at the same time. Also, fed my need to hermit, like my overwhelming urge to kind of hermit and just be alone, do my own thing, yada yada yada. Whether it was like the beginning of the lockdown where we were all stuck in our houses for X number of weeks, where yeah. you know video games and just family and, and stuff of that nature, like um, you know, me coming back to work during the beginning of COVID wasn't wasn't that much different than that. I just, I, I was lucky to be afforded another place where I could hermit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, wow. Well, I could hole up in two places. When that lockdown happened, like I was just like, holy shit, I've been training for this my entire life. Like no human contact. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. However, however, just to move on to the next portion of this question, um, you, I think for somebody who works uh, alone fairly often, you 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 ended up sort of linking up with a group of of people. Do you, like, like uh, is it the Luthalong? Is that is that actually what it's called, or is it is that just the? I think, I think that's what it's called. Um, it, it's through uh, Ian Davlin, who's a you know tried and true Luth um, based out of New Jersey at the moment, but has done his time at places like breed love and Lark street and stuff like that. He started a, he started a Patreon page a few years back. And I, while I wasn't an early adopter by any means, like I now will absolutely sing the praises of it every chance I get. Um, the, and the only reason I'm a late adopter of it was I'm just so incredibly fucking awkward. And the whole idea of, like being on webcam and talking to other humans, like still makes me feel a little barfy at times. Like I've, I've definitely got some anxiety. <laughs> yeah. But with that being said, thank you, Luthalong, because now I have you in that exact position. And it's only because of that Luthalong that I'm doing this right now. Um, it's, it's such an incredible wealth of knowledge. All of these other luthiers sort of at different stages in their careers. Some, some just beginning others sort of like shepherding, you know, people like us along, like mm -hmm. it's such a neat resource to like Luthen is such an absolutely weirdly isolating and insular job in so many ways to, to, and, and keep in mind, like early on, like I used to work in kitchens, like, and, and doing kitchen work back in the day where there was too much alcohol and everyone was sort of disgusting and, you know, like some of the greatest laughs I've ever had with other humans were in that work environment. And I, I think that's, you know, sort of what makes you able to sustain and survive in, in that sort of environment. Like cooking, yeah. cooking can be kind of rough. Um, but that sort of like camaraderie was something that, that I, I really, really missed. Like when I, I sort of, when I went to school for this, like it was in a shop in Toronto called the Canadian School of Lutheran written by a friend of mine named Jeremy Nix. There was like this beautiful little sort of sense of community that, that he was fostering that like after I left that school and 
came back here and just started doing this thing in solo. Like I missed it. And I tried to recreate it so many times and in so many ways, like, and just never got it right. And then, you know, my, my friend Grace Tamarin, who is Guelph guitar repair on Instagram, totally knows her shit. Mm -hmm. If you live in Ontario, like, and call her if you need stuff. Um, shameless plug. Mm -hmm. Done. Um, <laughs> and she kind of like, we've been, we've been having like a sort of like a weekly Instagram sort of video chat, get together thing with her and Nate Wood, who is like staying guitars in Oregon and, uh, East city. My, my friend Lewis, who's in like Peterborough. Um, we are having like these, these, like Monday morning sort of like get togethers, just sort of chatting about Luthen and customer relations and stuff like that. It was basically just like an avenue for us to all get together and commiserate over how much Luthen fucking sucks sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you, you created a water cooler, but I, I see what Grace did now where it was like, you know, that, that one sort of step into that realm, like, you know, that I, it was totally her just dragging me towards that, that, that Luthen log and, Ian, Ian Davlin and whatnot, who like I had already followed on Instagram for years um, yeah. at that yeah. point. It was neat though. Like it, it totally, it got sort of my foot in the water and I became a little more comfortable being me in front of people. Um, I'm might have some social anxiety where I, you know, hate sort of situations like that most of the time. Like, my idea of a good time is not going out and hanging out with people as much as I like there are people that I love and I, I love seeing and whatnot. Like it, it's, I, I'm just too fucking awkward for that life. You know, <laughs> I did a lot of it in my twenties and got over it in my thirties. Now that I'm in my forties, it's just like, I'd rather just go home and sleep at this point. Um, fair, very fair. I got forced out of my shell and like, holy shit. It was such a good thing. In, in so many ways, like not only just being able to network with all of these people all over the world who are doing this as well, but, you know, like there's this part of me that, that really loves it as this thing that is this like resource, this knowledge resource and like so many different voices all giving you sort of like a different way to do something or, you know, you have a shitty customer interaction or you fuck something up on the job, like these really weird high stress situations you bring it sort of into in there and then everybody's got a story. Like everybody has the nightmare customer everybody has the job that just went off the fucking rails and like that ability to commiserate with these other people in, in such an insular, usually insular environment is it's massive. Um, I've definitely like grown as a luthier in the last year because of it. Um, I, I would say very positively. <laughs> I, I guess it almost I, I, serves as a cloud for your uh, brain's hard drive to sort of at least be able to deposit things too, right? Like, because this is a, this is a hive mind of people who do essentially what you do um, all the, in their own way. And hive mind of homies in a way where it's like, <laughs> you know, the, the, the jokes, the, the tomfoolery, the jackassery in the, in this group of people, it's like, you know, we're all sort of similar in a lot of respects. We all sort of came at this from, you know, similar places and the temperament and sense of humor. Like I'm in it for the jokes at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> that place has provided me with some really good laughs. Like the, they're, they're solid folk. Well, that's good. That's good. So shout out to shout out to that community. It seems to have been probably, um, cause honestly, it feels like it might be something that, um, a lot of people post COVID and during COVID were u utilizing, you know, um, video chat and, uh, the ensuing sort of isolation that was, uh, kind of brought on with, uh, lockdowns for, for a couple of years, I think led a lot of people, especially in cooperative spaces, especially in creative spaces and in cooperative areas. Um, to have to resort to technology and to almost shoehorn humanity into technology, which is a kind of a beautiful thing, to be honest. You know, before 2020, I was getting up, I was putting on big boy pants every day, 
some people have been afforded the luxury of being able to uh, kind of stay at home and uh, and conduct conduct themselves and and you know have a life. You're pretty much a hermit. That this pandemic gave you uh, like a side effect of a community vibe while you're by yourself. You know, it's 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 a pretty awesome thing. Yeah, it actually really is. It's strange how that kind of played out. Yeah, I, I figured I was an island forever. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but it turns but it turns out you're. Uh, it's like everyone's uh, communicating like they used to on uh, Star Trek. Like everyone, it, it, everyone's not a, a, an island now. Everyone's a, a starship. You know, like uh, where you can talk to each other on a big screen. <laughs> Or to you know keep uh, keep it land based, uh, part of an archipelago. There you go. Yeah. So instead of it, yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. You you went back to the better analogy. I I, I fully fully uh, uh, support that. I'm very happy about it. Thank you very much. I'll probably <laughs> not not trying to veto your tangential. <laughs> oh, you know what? It deserved a it deserved a good veto. There you go. Um, do you have any stuff that's on your bucket list? left to work on or build or like uh, maybe a tentpole project that you really wanted to to do my real focus now aside from repair work and constantly keeping the lights on is automation i fully welcome our robot overlords um the one of the biggest time sucks in this job is the fact that i have to do every goddamn thing by hand or i have to build some stupid fucking tool for it by right. hand or you know, stuff of that nature. And we live in a day and age where uh, stuff like 3D printing and, and, you know, like not not commercial sized machines, but like it, there's sort of like this home based 3D crafting market, whether it's CAD, like oh, yeah. CAD machining things, or 3D printing them, like I, that's the future. And I would be an idiot not to uh, not to dive into that. Um, I can see so many applications for it um, in the job I do. And I think in learning to do it, it's going to drag me back to what my original goal and sort of like dream was in this where, you know, I draw the file, I print or cut the thing, but I can also walk away and do other things that earn money in that, that time. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm most interested in is actually like metal fabrication, um, machining things and like the idea of being able to produce a guitar in house where it's not just like, you know, a body and a neck that have been built and fretted like in my shop, but all of the custom plates and the bridge and like all of these components of, of, of this thing, um, I will have some sort of hand in that, that like, Oh my God, that speaks to me. Like, you know, it, it, it's not like an attempt to cut out the middleman or anything, but like, dude, I've seen so many guitars. I'm hardwired to solve problems. Right. So after years and years of seeing all of these guitars and, and like, you know, getting to know the inherent problems in, in certain processes, um, in, in making these things and putting them out in the market. Like, I mean, I see so many things that could be amended or improved or <laughs> scrapped and completely redone. Um, and I think that, you know, learning to 3D model things and, and make them myself is going to be the solution to a lot of this stuff. You know, it, it even just something like cutting custom plates, like getting a decent laser cutter and, and, you know, cutting custom plates for different guitars and, and being able to, you know, set something up to just print or cut or, or, you know, do this. It, it it's almost like trying to develop, like, I guess, a, a passive stream of income. I mean, it, there, there's no stream of income that is truly passive unless you're some big dick banker. You know, being able to just start something and walk away and do something else and come back to a finished product that, you know, you've seen it through all the stages, but the, you know, you, <laughs> you've got a machine doing it all for you. Um, right. It, that's, that's my way out of this. That's my way out of constant repair work and constantly trying to grind and hustle to keep everything like to keep all the balls in the air at the same time. Like it's, 
owning your own business is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess uh, looking into the future then, um, I, as an entrepreneur, are you – is there a retirement for an entrepreneur? What? You keep throwing that word out like I actually fucking know what I'm doing or talking about. Well, <laughs> like, as an entrepreneur, I, like you are, you are. Like I mean, there, there's no, there's no two ways around it. You are, you have your own business. That's the, that's no, the way it works. Like, ding dong in a dilapidated garage. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, but you're also talking about 3D printing. It's a very, very interesting, you know, subset of things. It's like, you know, like you're talking about the future. Yet, you are living in filth. I don't know. I don't think you are. I think you're. Uh, I think you're doing well. Why are you such a dick? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So I try. I try like. I try like hoity-toity sort of words, and then you take it down. And then I was like, "All right, fine, fine. You're a pig in the mud." And you're like, "Not you, Dennis. Christ." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> so okay, so as a as a dingus who makes makes a string, you're a stringus dingus. How's that? Are you are you good with that? As a stringus yeah. dingus, as a fan of Latin, I'm I'm I'm, big, I'm, I'm into that. That's that works for me. <laughs> so is there a reti- is there a retirement for this, or is this something you're just going to have to do until you can't do it anymore, and then see? I'm going to die at my bench. I'm like, I'm gonna die at my bench. There's there's no retirement for me. Like, a we don't exactly live in a day and age where a guy like me can sock money away and and you know dream of of you know like <laughs> sunsetting somewhere <laughs> nicer than this <laughs> shithole. Um, I'm gonna have to do this until I drop. There's no there's no retirement for me unless you can sort of. 3d print a clone that can do all your work for you at one point yeah or i get like hit by a bus and live and get a huge insurance settlement out of it like that that's really the only way i'm never going to be able to retire that's a very elaborate plan basically you could be you know all of a sudden just be frozen in place 85 years old lacquer just spraying you in the face and all of a sudden your light is extinguishes and that's that's what you think is going to be the end of you I work with nitro. I'm not living to 85. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, wear, I wear a respirator as like protection or whatnot for that environment. But like that shit is so toxic. Like I'm not, I'm not living to 85. All right. 84 then. When we first met and I've started following you on Instagram, your whole uh, sort of like online identity was, either guitars you were churning out or records you were playing. Uh, yeah. So you still play records in the shop, right? I can see behind you there is a record on your little wood block that shows what you're playing. So what's what's on the wood block right now, right behind that? That would be the uh, reissue of uh, Sings Rain Rebuilder by Set Fire to Flames. How does one set fire to flames? I don't know, man. Lots, lots of moving parts there. I can't even begin. <laughs> are there uh, are there records that you listen to for particular jobs or particular tasks? Like, do you have a record that is set for certain tasks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, every time I complete something and am content with it, usually it's like the end of a build or something that has you know been a notable amount of effort to complete i usually cap it off with uh listening to slayers rain and blood at like pretty much max volume from front to back <laughs> <laughs> like, it's 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 the way tom Araya, like screams mm-hmm. the, the, <laughs> the beginning of angel of death <laughs> it's oh. just like you you finish this thing and then it's like i get the catharsis of him doing that almost immediately after and it's it's pretty fucking fantastic it's like when the uh, streak i'm just like yeah i feel that 
<laughs> that's like the shriek of the bird at the beginning of the Flintstones. Uh, you know, like uh, the beginning of the Flintstones, where they pull on that bird. It's like, Wah! yeah. Except it's so much longer and so much higher pitched. It's true. How did how, how did he do it? He's not even like a super little guy. No, he's a he's a he's like a big barrel chested dude. Really, like if you look at him, it's like shaped like Rucker Hauer. May he rest in peace. May May Rutger rest in peace. Indeed. Rain and Blood is what you play as basically your uh, your your dinner whistle. Um, you know, meaning like you're you're finally uh, you're finally done. Right? So let's throw on some Tom Mariah screaming about Angel's death. Um, are there are there other? Is it just like a rotation of stuff that you listen to in the shop that just happens to be whatever you're listening to at the time? Or are there other things that sort of coincide with uh, tasks? Nah, it's just whatever I feel like. I mean, no, that's actually not true. I listen to a lot of really fast metal shit when I'm doing like neck curves and stuff like that. Um, Like things that I guess they aren't really like super rhythmic, but if you make them kind of rhythmic, it seems like less of a God awful chore to be doing it. So, you know, it was determined at one point in time within the shop that, uh, you know, Metallica's Four Horsemen is like the perfect cutting song because it's just that beat. It's just like rasping the whole time. Like it's just, it works so well. So yeah, a lot of like crazy, speedy, fast stuff for stuff like that. Um, if I'm doing just normal bench work, I mean, 99% of the time I've got music on is like filler. Um, it's sort of just like taking up a bit, taking up chop space in a way. Um I listen to a lot of like random kind of drone stuff, lots of stuff with field recordings and, you know, not stuff that you can tune out, but stuff that isn't like overwhelming, I yeah. guess. Um, oh, totally. I, I can relate to that. Um, sometimes yeah. when I need to like, concentrate on something. Thinking music. Yeah. Like, well, it's yeah. uh yeah, it's, it's music that can just sort of sit in the back of your head and sort of um, almost like play with the subconscious a little bit. And then you can sort of use your, uh, your foreground to concentrate on the task. It, it actually is very, uh, very helpful sometimes to play stuff like drone and like minimalist stuff. Um, you know, yeah. nothing too intricate, you know, it, it definitely helps. Uh, I, I always yeah. found that, uh, lyrical stuff with lyrics or even, even stuff that's fast or, you know, cause I, I love, you know, I love loud guitar music, but I can't, I can't try to do a task and also like like a task that requires brain power and listen mm-hmm. to you know anything lyrical because it's like my brain will automatically start sort of processing the words that are being sung even if they make no sense podcasts i cannot listen to podcasts in here podcasts in the car totally fine yeah like that environment but like I can't listen to podcasts in the shop while I'm trying to do stuff because I'm like, I'm so easily distracted sometimes that, you know, like I find myself drifting off and actually like, you know, really involving myself in this thing that should just be sort of like background. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any parting words or any uh, plugs, anything that you'd like to, to, to sort of say as a, as a cap on this fine conversation? I'm definitely going to like shamelessly plug uh, the Ian hates guitars, Patreon one more time. Like not just as a, you know, amazing resource Mm -hmm. of, of Luth knowledge, but also as a, like a a really solid community of humans. Um, If you're interested in Luthing at all and like, you know, wondering how to do stuff. Like, I mean, every answer you're looking for ostensibly is on the internet, but sometimes it can be really, really hard to filter out like what is good information, what is bad information. Like pretty much any job you run into in in this line of work, like you can find usually three or four YouTube videos of other people doing it. But with experience comes the realization that a lot of those YouTube videos are absolute shit. Like... (laughs) Oh, I know. I know. Sometimes people utilize a little bit. They lean too hard on YouTube for even basic things and they don't realize how bad things are until they break. Yeah. Having a sense of community in this job 
is huge and I think fundamentally leads to all of us becoming better luthiers. And just trying to weighing through stuff on your own at home, like that, that can be all, you know, that can work until it fucking doesn't. Yeah. And not, not being able to kind of sift through what's good information and bad information or, you know, um, not really have anyone to ask. Like, I mean, it, that, it's really, really daunting. And I, I found within this community, like, you know, there's so many ways to skin a cat, which is like the worst analogy of all time. Um, being able to hear it from, uh, you know, multiple people with hands-on experience, like their sort of process or their experience doing this job or something of that sort of nature, like it's, it's incredibly helpful. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll throw, we'll throw links up to that, um, you know, uh, as we, as we go here. Um, and for yourself, I, uh, I put, uh, slyly, I put at the bottom of your uh, picture here, your Instagram, um, which is one of my favorite accounts to follow. Um, it is, it is. Don't give me the disapproving look. You know how much I like it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Socially Awkward, uh, would you like to also plug your own your own social media, or would you like me to just let that sit there? It's been there the whole time, right? <laughs> like, it's like if you didn't fucking figure that out already, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm this guy right here. Oh, oh, there oh, we go, right there. Yeah, yeah, that. I'll clean that up in post. I'll just, uh, I'll just. I'll, I'll try to superimpose. Follow me on No Guitars. Uh, <laughs> it's like Camp Krusty, Mister Black. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, dude, this has been a, an absolute joy uh, to uh, to talk to you and to pick your brain and to learn more about uh, Luther than I. Uh, I, that I knew before I started this conversation with you. So I wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much uh, for talking to me and spending some time. Anytime, man. I, 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 I love you to death, but um, I wish I was better at articulating shit and not such a weirdo hermit. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we'll clean this all up in post. Well, dude, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as always, I love you too, and uh, we will uh, we will definitely talk again. And uh, all the best to you. And uh, hey, keep on loosing.